Now, as you've seen with Camera Raw, with regards to the hue, saturation, and luminance panel, uh, it's no surprise that in Photoshop you'll actually find a similar uh, feature set called hue and saturation. Now, hue and saturation has been around for years, and it can do some pretty fancy things. Now, with that said, uh, you just need to be careful when using it, as I'm about to show you. So, hue and saturation is located under layers, under new adjustment layer, and it's about halfway down. So I'm just going to add that as a new layer. And the first thing you'll notice, as with all of the um, adjustments in Photoshop for CS5, is that you have a set of presets um, that you can utilize by basically clicking on this little icon and displaying a drop down menu. And as you can see here, you have a variety of different options from increasing the saturation to different types of effects from cyanotypes to sepia images. So you have some degree of um, uh, creative license by utilizing the presets in hue and saturation. Um, now, for most of the time, you're probably going to use your own custom settings, though. So in this case, we'll just go back to default. So it zeroes everything off. And what you'll see is that you have a series of different sliders. Now, these are very similar to the sliders in, um, in Hue, Saturation, and Luminance in Camera Raw. You have a Hue slider, which basically determines the hue or the color of the um, what you're actually adjusting. So in this case, if I wanted to change the color of the entire image, I can basically adjust the hue and that'll start to change the hue of all the colors in the image, as you can see there. So you can get some really psychedelic colors. Now, along with that, we have saturation settings, which are pretty self-evident, where you can either decrease the saturation and end up with a black and white image, or you can increase the saturation and really get some vivid colors. And finally, you have the lightness slider. Now, the lightness slider simply lightens off the colors. And it, it can be useful um, on some occasions, but most of the time, I don't generally use the lightness slider. Um, but have a play around with it and see what you personally prefer. Now, also, you'll notice here that you have a master setting. Now, master simply refers to an overall uh, hue saturation adjustment to the entire image. Now if you click on this you'll notice here that you can specify specific colors in your image that you'd actually like to adjust similar to um, just as I've shown you in previous videos with regards to the hue saturation and luminance in Camera Raw. So if I was to select reds what you can do then is actually choose the parameters of the actual hues that you're actually going to adjust. So in this particular example, the default settings here are based on these particular sliders and it's the focus is primarily on the center area. But if you wanted to, you could actually extend these just by grabbing them and moving them into the position that you preferably want them to be in. So by adjusting them and expanding them, I've added a little bit more orange in and a slightly a little bit more magenta into the area that I'm going to be adjusting. So that is um, extremely useful when you have really specific colors. Now, it's going to also give you the hue values here, and that's in a percentage of um, from 0 to 360 degrees. Um, that's something also you'll notice if you actually open up the color picker, where you'll see here that you have um, a hue value, and that's in a percentage. So as I select a particular um, color, you'll notice that the hue um, values change, especially once you actually change the checkbox as opposed to leaving it set to zero. Um, I'll set on hue because it won't actually uh, change those values as I move around the mouse. So that will give you some idea on where the colors will actually sit just by grabbing these sliders. Uh, but continuing on, you'll notice also that you have a colorize option here. And that will primarily just colorize your image based on the settings that you've actually set up. Now that can be very interesting for um, different types of effects. But essentially, it's going to allow you to uh, end up with effects such as the cyanotypes and the sepia images that we saw in the presets, where it's actually colorizing or it's adding color 
a single color to the entire image and you're ending up with an image that um, is not a duotone but it's sort of a single tone uh, colored image and that can be quite interesting for certain effects as I, as I mentioned with sepia or, or sana types they can look quite impressive um, but most of the time you're probably not going to utilize this especially uh, with regards to now being able to create split tones in camera raw itself so continuing on we also have some eyedropper tools here where you can actually specify a particular color that you want to actually work on so as i move this around you'll notice the sliders here are actually changing as as um, in relation to the specific color that i'm actually clicking on and by doing that i can essentially go well i want this this particular sky is what i want to affect so i'm going to select the sky and then i can actually go in and start to adjust the uh, hue for example and that's specific to that particular color that I've selected and then you can continue to adjust the other sliders accordingly. You also have a uh, additive eye picker or add to the sample and a subtractive where you want to continue to add to this sample so if I want to continue to add you know some darker blues or some cyanotype uh, areas you can see here just by dragging over certain areas those sliders have increased so that I've I'm primarily making an adjustment to more of the colors in the image by adding to them uh, specific to the areas that you actually go and click on and uh, vice versa you can also use the subtract um, from sample eye picker as well in order to actually subtract specific colors that you're actually going to be adjusting so that's the hue and saturation uh, adjustment in Photoshop. Now as you can see it is very similar to the adjustments that can be made using the hue saturation and luminance panel in Camera Raw uh, but having said that you're not actually working on a raw file so the results aren't going to be the same they're not going to be as good and that's why you just need to be careful when making adjustments with hue and saturation on JPEGs and, and other images in Photoshop that you that you make your adjustments using small increments and be very minimalistic because you can end up with some very exaggerated and extreme results where you actually introduce effects such as posterization and that's just an effect where you exaggerate certain areas or colors or pixel values in your image that really become prominent and um, they can be very easily pointed out by the viewer so an example of that is if I was just to quickly grab the saturation slider and we just increase that for the blues for example what you'll notice here is especially with this the the top of this tin roof on this little beach hut if you'll, you'll now see that I've actually introduced that lovely sort of sky blue tone that wasn't particularly there in well there I mean it had a slight tone to it due to the sky but it wasn't actually visually um, evident when actually editing your photos so now just by increasing the hue um, uh, the saturation in hue and saturation that has really become prominent in the image so that's posterization so you just want to make sure that you don't overdo it with hue and saturation in Photoshop